Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. Today we're going to be putting together a solar setup for our off-grid chicken camper. Solar companies want to charge an arm and a leg to do this kind of thing, but I ain't got no arms or legs to spare. So we're going to do it ourselves. It probably won't be right, but it'll probably work. And with this setup that we're doing, we're not going to be able to go full on to solar, but we can severely limit our usage of the generator back here. So to show you where we're going, I got to show you where we are. So starting at the generator, it runs down our fun, sketchy homemade power lines to power the water pump. And the generator's remote starts so whenever we need water, we just hit the button inside. We also have the shore tie plugged into the generator to provide 120 to the camper. So the 120 in the camper powers the important appliances, like the coffee maker or the microwave. I can only use those when I'm running the generator, which is fine because they don't run for very long. The lights, however, are on a separate system. They're on a 12 volt. Same with the furnace. So we don't have to run the generator to have heat. That 12 volt system is contained with these two batteries. It was just one battery, but the single deep cycle kept the furnace fan barely spinning all night. So we went ahead and added a second one. We ran them in parallel, positive, positive, negative, negative. So it's still providing 12 volts, just double the capacity. Whenever the generator's running, these two wires right here are charging up the batteries. So with the generator running for a couple hours a day, we've got enough 12 volt to run the furnace all night. Maybe a light to read by. And if those battery cables look kind of strange, they were jumper cables, but these stupid locking ratcheting jumper cables, I don't like them. Battery cables are expensive and I have other jumper cables, so we just threw some terminal ends on it and let her wobble. Now within the camper, the two systems basically remain separate for the most part. It doesn't have its own inverter, so I can't use the 12 volt to plug something in. So we got our own inverter. It, like me, is deep in the closet where nobody will ever know. I got a light in here. So this is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I ran my battery cables down there through that hatch in the floor. So we can use the inverter to charge phones and crap like that. Under that hatch, I drilled out holes to run that through and then I just sealed the crap out of it. So that's where we're at right now. We can run small appliances or do little things with 120, but we really don't have the capacity for any systems that have a large draw or a constant draw. On top of that, we have almost no service out here, which is why we got Starlink. Now they make an RV version of it, and I think the RV runs on 12 volt, but we picked this one up, used and refurbished, it was cheaper. It's a residential one, so it uses 120. All right, now from here, we're going into the calculations, so try and follow me. Watts equals amps times volts. We're gonna need that to make sure we got enough juice available. Starlink uses about 65 watts per hour, though it uses about 175 on startup. So we're just gonna average it out to 100 watts. And I know that's high, but the alignment motors use a little bit more I'd rather know that I got it. 100 watts is an easy number. So 100 watts divided by the 120 volts means we've got an amp draw of 0.8 amps. This deep cycle battery will, will this deep cycle battery will run 125. This deep cycle battery will run 175. I'm having a hard time here. This is not as easy as it looks. My brain goes way slower than my mouth does. Makes my editing harder. Just so you know. So this battery will run 175 minutes on 25 amp draw. 25 amps is a lot. That's why those deep cycle batteries are used on trolling motors, which in fact, the second one that I put in came off my little 12 foot John boat. It's starting to cool off, don't need it anymore for the year. So that means that battery is about 65, 70 amp hours, which means if Starlink is drawing 0.8 amps, we probably get about three days out of one battery. Here's the thing, we ain't getting three days out of one battery. My wife likes to read her little fairy time books at night she's got a light on for that we're already running the furnace it was 41 degrees last night and there's other little things that we're gonna have here and there plus you don't have 100 percent efficiency that inverter is rated at 90 which means it's probably a low 80s so there's plenty of other things taxing the system what we want to do with our solar setup is make sure that we've got enough juice to replace what's going out in a timely fashion so that we're not having to run the generator for a few hours every day so i know that was a lot but in summary We keep those batteries charged, we could probably run the internet for four days, three, four days. That's going to be less in the winter when we're running the furnace more often. But if we can feed that battery bank constantly, we can essentially keep up with our usage without having to worry about the generator. Only have to run it while taking a shower. Now I only take one shower a week, whether I need it or not. So that's the talking part in the background on what we got so far. Let's go get these solar panels. Do not tilt. I wonder what they mean by that. All right, so this kit we got off of Amazon. It's 400 watt kit. It's got four panels. It's got the charge controller. It's got the extra MC4 connectors. Those are the, the standard ones that are used on solar. 
I, I guess. And brackets and all kinds of crap. So I'm gonna do something I'm not known for. I'm gonna read some instructions and get back to you. We'll get these panels mounted up. All right, so I did some reading. So the first thing we need to do is pick out a location. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun is always gonna make an arc across the Southern sky. So we want our panels to face South. We have to take into account the distance from our panels to our charge controller, which I'll get more into that when we hook it up. But as far as I'm concerned, I think this little spot on the fence right here will be good. Sun goes across the sky that way. We'll set it up so that we can tilt it to account for changing of the seasons, but we do have to measure carefully to make sure it'll fit. Yep. All right, that much left. Yeah, we're good. It'll be tight, but it should work. The kit came with brackets, so we'll go ahead and put them on. Be it known that on this day, I installed 16 brackets, nuts, lock washers, and 32 washers without dropping a single one in the dirt, which is good because they didn't give me any extra. So now let's build something for these to sit on. And there we go. We got a nice little bracket with our four sandal. Didn't we got our, we got, we, we have a nice little bracket with our four panel set up on it, soaking up all that good sun juice. And in case that looks too professional for me, um, I, I'll show you the details a little bit closer. I, measuring in math, kind of screwed it up a little bit. So I had to overlap the brackets a little bit to make them all fit on there, but that's fine, no big deal. And then as I was walking down the line, some of the holes didn't line up with the wood. So I just sent it through the bracket because it don't matter. There's no law against it. If you take a look under here, I got it secured to the fence with a GRK. It's basically the duct tape of building supplies. And then I set the angle so I had the most sun exposure. Basically just watched the shadow on the ground until it was as big as it could get. And I put that screw in there to set it. So as the year goes on and the sun gets lower in the sky, I can change that angle, bring it more towards the sun, get more of that good juice. Speaking of juice, let's see what these are putting out. So if you take a look underneath here, it tells you everything that the panel is rated for. 100 watt, open circuit voltage, 24.3, just over five amps. And realistically, those are probably like best case scenario, like the most that it can do. So let's see what each one's actually putting out here at the panel. All right, so this one got about 23 volts, not bad. So from here, we have the option of running these in series or in parallel. You already know what that means, because I told you, you were, you were taking notes, right? Anyway, the reason we wanna run these in series is because we have no problem bringing this up to 100 volts and just running that through a narrow wire over to our charge controller. Our charge controller can handle a maximum of 100 volts going in. So we'll be just under that. If we ran them in parallel, we'd end up with a little over 20 amps going. We'd have to upsize our wire. That costs money that we don't have. Luckily with these, they even made them idiot proof. Male and female, the MC4 connectors. The male one is the one you think it is and it's positive. I'm not saying anything else from there before I get myself in trouble. So we're gonna hook them together in series and see what kind of numbers we come up with. And now with them all hooked together, I got my meter back on it, reading about 92 amps. Amps, volts, 92 volts. That's what we expected. 92 volts, right around five amps. All right, so we got 92 volts, five amps. It's right here. We need it over there. We're gonna do that in the simplest way possible using something I already have, a hundred foot extension cord. It's not what I would call like, you know, the right way to do it. But braided copper is braided copper. This is 12 gauge. That's more than enough to move the electricity that we need. Buck connectors probably would have been better, but I couldn't find any six gauge ones to fit. Well, a six, eight, whatever this is, I couldn't find any to fit it. So just wire nut it. Probably take the hell out of it. Connected, disconnected. So, whatever. All right, so we got our definitely to code spliced extension cord ran over to here. I left this end of it out and we're gonna connect the other half to the charge controller so that whenever we need to disconnect the system, we just unplug it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount up our charge controller. Basically what this does is it takes whatever voltage up to a certain point that's coming in from the panels, it converts it down to 12 volt, sends it to the battery. So you've got your terminals for the positive and negative from the panel, going to the battery, and then you got two over here for load. Basically, if you got something that you want to power directly from panel to whatever. We won't be using those. So we're gonna go inside, we're gonna drill holes and run cables and 
you know, put it all together. There we go. These go into our solar. These go into our battery. Now the moment of truth, we get to hook things up. Hey, baby, can you stand by with the fire extinguisher? What? And now, in the words of the great philosopher, Mr. Clark Griswold, joy to the world. Just kidding. And there we go. Solar panels making juice. That's a good deck. So we've had it set up for about an hour now. We went ahead and moved all the Starlink crap over. The inverter is uh, full charge. It's showing just fine. My voltage on here is showing just fine. Nothing's caught on fire yet. Fan works on the inverter. Now that's the thing we know. And everything seems to be going well. I'm always skeptical when things work the first time, but uh, eh. So the charge controller has all kinds of settings. Right there, it shows the voltage that we got working with. Panels are putting out 86 volts. Amperage going into the battery. Charge percentage. Voltage. All that fun stuff. And everything out here is looking good too. Y'all, we might have gotten it right the first time. I, I, I can only go off of what I'm seeing and that's kind of what it seems like. So it's a good day. Y'all looking into building your own solar system can be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of different parts that go into it, but ultimately it's all very simple. Panels to charge controller, charge controller to batteries, batteries to wherever. That's it. That's all there is to it. It is recommended that I put fuse protection in there. I need to uh, figure that out. And nothing I got in there is grounded. Should probably do that too. But we got the basics of the system down and y'all, we did it for cheap. Panels and the charge controller, I think was like $400. I stole the batteries from various places. I made the wiring with different crap that I already had. And now I can upload this video without running a generator. As I said before, it's a good day. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed and I hope you learned something. I love you, God bless. For the inevitable comments about the 20, eight 29 different safety violations about this little project i'd like to point out i put them wire nuts in a box not like an outside box not a box that's made for it but at least i ain't got my nuts hanging out